I don't know art without Andy Warhol. He died in 1987. That's the year I was born. And so my experience of art can never be seen without a pop cultural lens or, or through the lens of Andy Warhol. Like, there's no possible way. And that frustrates me as much as it does excites me. Uh, he changed everything. He changed everything from my generation forward. Um, and I want to deal with that. <laughs> he changed how we look at art. And he changed how we respond to art. And he changed the possibilities of what we do with art or what we consider art. I was born into the challenge of Andy Warhol. <laughs> There's also this interest and this thought about Warhol and immortalization and how he does that with people's names and with, with ideas around people. Marilyn Monroe, Edie Sedgwick, Undine. And there's something about when you create a title, you sort of immortal, you sort of crystallize something, you immortalize something. And, and I feel like in the past five years of my making work, I've been very much, I don't know, it crystallizes with a statement, I love Phaedra Skull. Having been influenced and seen Phaedra Skull's work, I feel like um, I, I want to claim a kinship. I don't actually feel like there's a, a lineage or, or a family tree between Faye Driscoll and I, um, more so than it's like, I li like, I've, I'm connected to that. I, like, I am interested in the same questions, I think. From what I see, it looks like we are asking the same questions. And I don't know Phaedra School that well, but I feel so connected to her. It's so weird to say that, but it's true. Um, and that's from seeing her work. I see her work and I see myself. And I don't know, she's probably like, it has nothing to do with you, and that's cool, but that's not what I see. Um, and that's not what I feel. I feel that when I see her work, I feel deeply connected to it and inspired by it and encouraged to do my own work.